Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have the same problem a third time because we're going to solve it using a third method. This time we're going to find the exact center mass using calculus. In the previous two methods we used approximations. The very first method was a very quick approximation, what we call quick and dirty. We got an approximate answer, not somewhat close but not exactly the correct answer. The second time we used a more calculated approach, still not using calculus, but we came up with a much better way to estimate the position, the center mass position of the missing piece of the ring, and now we're going to find the exact position of the missing ring, or the exact position of the center mass of the missing part of the ring, so that we get the exact center mass of the whole structure. Again, we start with an entire ring, has a radius of 30 centimeters, we cut out a piece, the length of the piece along the ring edge is 20 centimeters, and we're supposed to find the center of mass. Because the missing piece is there, the center mass will be somewhere below the origin of the x-y axis. The question is how much below, and these were the first two estimates from the first two estimates on the previous two videos. We still use the same technique to find the center mass in the y direction. It is the sum of the product of the center mass of the whole ring times the mass of the ring minus the center mass of the missing piece times the mass of the missing piece divided by the sum of the two masses. Again, so when we say the sum, of course, if it's a missing piece, we subtract the missing piece like that. The only difference between what we did before and what we do here is that we now are going to find the exact position, the direction in the y-axis, the position of the center mass of the missing piece. Now, the center mass of the whole ring is, of course, right in the middle, so the center mass position is zero times the length. So instead of using the mass, we're going to use the length of the whole ring, it's only proportional, minus the center mass of the missing piece times the mass, or the length of the missing piece, it's the length of the entire ring times the ratio of the length of the missing piece divided by the circumference of the ring, of course, that's the whole length. And then here, the sum of the masses, or the sum of the lengths, the length of the whole, whole ring minus the length of the missing piece. Again, it's the fraction or proportion of the total length. We, we calculated the fraction before as being 0.106, so this fraction right here is 0.106 if you want to calculate it. But now, how do we find the exact position of the missing piece? Well, we're going to use calculus for that. So what we're doing here is we're taking the missing piece and divide it by 2 because the center mass of the less left piece is exactly the same as the center mass of the right piece because of the perfect symmetry. So we just have to do it for one piece. So here what we're going to do is we're going to call this length right here, we're going to call that a small little DL, a small length piece along the edge of the ring. And to find that, that's going to be equal to the radius times d theta. So that's going to be the small d theta right here. So let's mark this as being d theta, and that's going to be a small length position. So now what we want to do is we want to say that the center of mass of the missing piece, so y tilde of the missing piece, that's just what we're looking for right here, is going to be equal to the integral of the y tilde of each little segment right here times... Well, it normally would be times the mass, but instead of the mass, we use the length, so it's going to be times the dl, divided by the integral of all the dls. Now, if you plug in what these are, well, first of all, notice that that's going to be this distance right here, right? This is the y tilde right here of the little piece up there. And how do we find that? Well, notice that this is going to be the same as this y tilde right here, which is the rectangle. And this here is going to be equal to the, to the radius times the angle theta. So that's going to be equal to the integral of r times, well, it's going to be r times the cosine of theta, because we need to take the cosine of theta. So that's the y tilde, that's this thing right here, times dl, and dl is r d theta. Divided by the integral of all the dls, and the dl is going to be r times d theta. So let me show you again what this is. So first of all, this y tilde is the center mass to this little piece right there. And of course, that little piece is going to go from here to there. Secondly, uh, to find the height of that piece, that's going to be this height right here, it's going to be this height right here. We have the radius of the circle 
times the cosine of this angle, this angle here, let's call this angle theta. So r times the cosine of theta gives us the distance to that little dl. And then we multiply it times the length of that, which is representative of the small amount of mass, but it's proportional, so r times d theta. Now we have to find the limits of integration. The limits of integration are going to be from theta equals zero to this distance right here. So what's this total angle when you go from here to there? Now to find the angle there, we can do the following. We can say that the, so let me draw that right here. So we need to find this angle right here. Let's call this angle alpha. How do we find the alpha? Well, first of all, we know that this is 10 centimeters and this here is 30 centimeters. That's the radius of the ring, and this is the right side of the missing piece, half the missing piece, 10 centimeters. And we know that we can say that the length here, the 10 centimeters, is going to be equal to the radius times the angle. So that would be the radius, 30 centimeters, times alpha, which means that alpha is equal to 10 over 30, and that's, of course, in radians. So it's one-third radian. Alpha is equal to one-third of a radian. Now, a radian is equal to, uh, so that would be equal to one-third times uh, 360 degrees divided by 2 pi, if you want to convert it to radians, I mean to degrees. So we take uh, 360 divided by 2 divided by pi, so that's equal to one-third of 57.3 degrees, because the radian degrees is approximately 57.3, divided by 3, we get 19, so we get 19 point, well, about 1 degree, roughly speaking. All right, so that is the limit of integration from 0 to 19.1 degrees, or from 0 to one-third of a radian. So from 0 to one-third of a radian, or from 0 to 19.1 degrees, depending upon which integration you have. So this is equal to, let's pull out an r squared. We have an r squared times the integral from 0 to 19.1 degrees of the cosine of theta times d theta, divided by, here we have, we pull out an r times the integral from 0 to 1 third radian of d theta, because, of course, d theta is going to be in radians. All right, if we integrate that, First of all, we have an r squared on r, that, so we just get r, times the integral of the cosine is the sine of theta from 0 to 19.1 degrees, divided by uh, theta, the integral of d theta is theta, evaluated from 0 to 1 third of a radian. This should be 1 third, and these are radians, of course. Okay, so that means that we take the sine of that, the sine of that, which is the radius, which is 30 centimeters, times the sine of that evaluated that number, which is 0 0.3272, all divided by one third of a radian. Okay, so that gives us the position of the center mass. So this is equal to uh, y tilde for the center mass, which is the value that's going to go in this equation right there. And let's see here, that that's going to be um, 32.72 times 30 times 3 equals, and that gives us, that's equal to 29.448 centimeters. So that's the true position to three decimal places of the missing piece right here, which is going to go right in there. So this value will need to go right in there. Okay, now notice that this was the value we got when this was made into 30 centimeters. So all we have to do is take that same result that we got from method one and replace, instead of this 30, we're going to now replace it by 29.448. So we take, we multiply that times 3.4 whoop, 3.56, and divide by 30, and that gives us 3.49. So, method three, we get the center mass is equal to minus 3.495, 495, so we can say that the center mass 
is about minus 3.50 centimeters, which means that the exact value is really very, very close to our good approximation for method two. We actually got really close with our method two, but method three gives us the exact value. So now again, if you get rid of all the L's and you multiply this out, you plug in all those values, then you get the value of minus 3.5 centimeters, which is the position of the center mass of that ring with that missing piece. So it turns out we did a really good job with method two. And with method three, this shows you how to find the exact value of the center mass using calculus. And that is how it's done. Method one is close enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually, when it comes down to it, method one is a perfectly valid method that gets you really, really close. Notice these are centimeters, these are millimeters. We're talking about 0.6 of a millimeter difference. I know, and the ring is 30 centimeters. Close enough. Close enough. That's right. I like method one best. <laughs> All right, is that a wrap for today? Yeah, All right.